Well, hey, YouTube. Welcome to another edition of Inking with Jimmy. Today's video title is Redo. Wouldn't it be great if we could go back in time and redo something, change the outcome, change our approach, just change anything? Well, about a year ago, I decided that I was going to devote 100% of my time to living my dream, which is inking comic books. I want to get to work with many different talented artists that are out there. There's so many. And one of those artists is David Finch. Saw a piece that he had drawn for The Dark Knight, which was the hardcover, I believe, um, for The Dark Knight Collected Edition. And uh, I downloaded that piece and decided that was going to be my first attempt for building a new portfolio. Well, after I finished it, put it online, my DeviantArt page, and uh, it's been up there for almost a year. And uh, going through my DeviantArt page a couple of days ago, I saw the piece and said, ooh, it's really not that good, you know? So I decided that I was gonna go ahead and redo that page. I wanna challenge myself, see if I could do better. What have I learned in that amount of time? You know, is there anything that I've learned in that amount of time? Well, I hope so. So I've done just that. I've re-inked the, uh, the cover and um, just finished it tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I've made a video and um, gonna go ahead and uh, show you the piece that I've inked. Uh, this is the new version and uh, the old version, fortunately I couldn't find the original, but it is on my DeviantArt page and at the end of the video, I will put up a side-by-side -side comparison so you can take a look. But let's go ahead and watch the video now. You can see the process of how I inked this page. And then at the end, you can take a look and be the judge for yourself. And let me know if you think if there's any improvement at all. Well, this image is printed on 11 by 17 Strathmore Bristol board, 300 series smooth surface. And uh, I normally don't ink on the 300 series. Uh, I usually will ink on the 400 series smooth surface. Uh, unfortunately, the 300 series was the only paper available at the time. So um, I went ahead and I worked with what I had. Um, I would like to ink on the 500 series, but uh, that is out of my budget. <laughs> uh, what I'm inking with is a uh, 102 Crow Quill by Speedball. Um, the 102 is the tool that I choose to ink most of my pages with because I do like to ink with crisp sharp lines and the 102 will give me those crisp sharp lines and allows me to sculpt and angle my lines make them very angular um, if I'm looking for a softer smoother or round line uh, then I will go with the brush um, but uh, for Dave's work because his work is is pretty uh, angular um, and a, a lot of different uh, sharp edges on, on his, uh, his line work. So I, I chose to ink it with the, the 102. The type of line work that I like, um, that I've seen over Dave's work, is uh, done by um, inker Danny Miki. He's an incredible, uh, very talented inker. Um, his rendering is very tight, um, it's very thin. And um, the second inker whose work I think looks just great over Dave's work is uh, Joe Weems. And Joe Weems inks very angular, um, very sharp edges. Um, and so when I approach this page, I've, I've kind of created an, uh, an amalgamation of both um, angular lines and keeping my rendering um, more uh, you know, closer together and thinner. Uh, sort of a Danny Meeky kind of style, kind of blending the two together, um, or at least attempting to, because <laughs> those two guys are, are incredibly talented, um, and uh, no two inkers throw a line exactly the same. So, <laughs> But that was kind of uh, the approach um, that I had before inking the page, is kind of my, my forethought. Um, this particular image is printed in non-photo blue, so when you print in non-photo blue, it becomes a solid blue tone. Um, you don't get the type of different uh, variations to tone depending on the weight that the pencil puts down on the pencils that, that you could see in the graphite um, that you would have in an original image. Um, unfortunately, I, I didn't get the <laughs> I didn't get the opportunity to ink over the, the original, um, and uh, so having to uh, ink over blue line, you you lose a lot of detail. 
So I printed out the pencils, and you can see on the left of your screen there is a photocopy of the pencils uh, printed out that I use as a reference because I want to be able to um, to look at certain areas in the uh, as close as I could get to the original pencils to be able to see some of the the line work that uh, Dave had done, some of the underdrawings, some of the gesture drawings, because what is really important um, when for inkers to keep in mind is form, the shapes, um, you know, your your light source, textures. You know, the, these are, are just a few of the things that as an inker you really want to focus on. As a penciler, it's different. Yeah, you know, when you're inking. Uh, I'm sorry, as a penciler, when you're penciling interior pages, you know, your pacing, your storytelling, perspective, camera angles, anatomy, you know, there, there's a lot that goes into uh, penciling. But for inkers, it's not just tracing, it's not just going over the line work and just putting ink on top of graphite um, over pencil. You know, that's that's not at all what, what inking is. Um, as inking, I mean, we're, we're embellishers, we're finishers, um, we're artists our, ourselves. Um, but although the work has already been done, there still is a certain technique and, and things that you do have to keep in mind as an inker. Um, and most importantly is shapes. Um, in this particular image, um, Dave has used uh, a, lo a lot of uh, his shapes here um, have been uh, given form by his rendering. Um, and then the other thing that you want to keep in mind is light source. So in this particular image, uh, the light source is off to the top left of the figure, which is the top right corner of the image that as you're looking down as, as the artist. Um, and so keeping in mind the light source and the shapes, Batman is not, his body isn't flat. So the parts that are round and that are elevated and that uh, are closer to the viewer are what the light touches so those parts are in white the concave parts and the parts that are, are a little flatter or f and that dip in that are further away those are in shadow so what Dave has done to give shape to the figure and to show concave he's used bleeds and the bleeds go in the direction of the shape of the figure to, of the form so that the figure it creates the, the illusion of the figure having you know three dimensional and having weight to him. So keeping this in mind, this is what was uh, in my mind while I'm inking. So that um, as I'm inking, I want to make sure that uh, where I'm leaving uh, white spaces and where I am reverse inking it are the areas that are closer up to the light source that the light is actually reaching and it's reflecting off these top parts of the figure. So those parts are in white. Also, keeping in mind the light source, the lines that are further away from the light are thicker. The underneath um, part that are uh, pieces here as if on, on his cape, it's overlapping on his chest. So underneath there, that line is just a little thicker than the line that is right above it because the light is hitting that line that's right up above, which is the top part of the cape. And then the little part that is underneath between his chest and the cape with that slight little gap in there, that line is thicker. Um, so you want to keep in mind light source. That'll help you and tell you where to vary uh, your line weights. Um, in some areas where the light is hitting at the very top, which is the very top of Batman's head, um, at the very top where his cowl goes over his head, that part is, is oval shaped, it's, it's round. Um, and so as that part reaches the top, there's more light like right in the center and you can see where Dave has broken that line. And the reason he's done that is because uh, that's where the, the light is reflecting off the top of his head. So keeping that um, as I'm inking, uh, keeping that in mind, I also broke that line as well. Um, not every single line that is placed down by the penciler um, is going to be followed by the inker. Um, you know, it's, it's our job to know when and where to break a line, when and where to add weight variation. And that is uh, primarily 
dictated by your light source, uh, where the light is hitting. Um, some of the angular lines that are around the figure that you see, yeah, a lot of that is style. A lot of that is really Dave's work, his style. Um, and Joe Weems, uh, who is inked over Dave, um, his style is also angular like that. And and I've, I really enjoy that type of line work, um, you know, creating that type of line work. I also think it works very well for Dave's uh, style. So I, I felt that that was the best approach when inking that. A lot of angular lines. Um, there's some lines in there that are a little square, um, you know, sharp edges uh, around the figure um, within the cape and, and throughout the, the, the piece itself. Um, so when I'm placing my lines down, even though and, and trying to keep these sharp lines, sometimes I have to throw my line fairly quickly. And that comes with uh, knowing your tool, um, experience, you know, just over time, you, you will learn when to speed up and to throw your line quicker. Uh, some lines are sculpted, um, and those lines I generally ink a little slower, and I sculpt those lines and shape them um, almost as if I were a sculptor and um, working with clay, you know, modeling clay, I would add a little more clay and, uh, you know, build up to get the shape that I'm, I'm looking for. Um, and so uh, to keep that crisp line, some of those lines, when I need that, are, are thrown a little faster. Uh, the video that you're watching is sped up uh, one and a half times um, so that uh, the video doesn't exactly <laughs> become an hour long or two hour long video. You know, this is um, a shorter video. It's generally, I think it's, I'm estimating about 35 minutes or so. Um, you know, if you don't mind sitting and watching uh, inking for 35 minutes, then um, you know, that's great because if, especially if you're an, expir uh, an aspiring inker, <laughs> you're going to be watching yourself ink for a lot longer than that. It, it does take a lot of time. It is labor intense. Um, and this particular uh, work and becoming a, an inker um, or even a penciler, you know, as an artist, it, you really have to have patience um, because you, you do have to learn and adjust to being at your drafting table for up to 12 hours. Uh, generally, it's going to take you about 6 to 12 hours to ink a page. Um, and it really just depends on the amount of line work that is in a page because every single line you see in artwork, in a comic book, in a comic page, or on a comic book cover, is most of the time it is, it is all done by hand. And it means someone had to put each and every line down on that paper. And so it is labor intense, but it's also, uh, for me, it's, it's very therapeutic. Um, I enjoy it. Um, you know, I, I sometimes, um, when I'm, I'm inking something like, like this particular piece, it's, it's pretty challenging. Um, it's also challenging because the image is printed in non photo blue and, and it was very difficult to see all the, the fine lines. Um, in detail, so I did have to pay very, very close attention to everything that I was inking and referring back to the photocopy. But even, even though, um, you know, at, at times um, that uh, some sometimes the artwork can can just be, you know, it, it's it's a lot of the same thing, a lot of the same type of lines that I'm putting down. Um, sometimes it's not completely mindless, but sometimes. Um, the work can, it, it can be a little tedious sometimes. Um, um, I just, I kind of drift off there for a little bit when, while I'm inking, you know, and, and, and that's where I kind of feel it's therapeutic because then I'm, I'm not really thinking about anything very deep. I am still thinking about the artwork, but I'm not, I'm not really struggling. I'm a little more relaxed, um, working, you know, um, over Dave's work. Um, it, it's, um, I want to say that it's a, it's a style that I'm very comfortable with. It's a style that I, I really like and I enjoy. Um, and I feel that it, it does challenge me as an inker and that, um, you know, I, I do want to grow. And so I, I really enjoy inking this piece. Um, and I think if I had inked over the original or, um, you know, a penciled version of it, then um, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have struggled as much. I would, there would be a lot, a few things that I would do differently, I'm sure, because then the, the line work changes. I could see more. Um, 
of the underdrawing and, and get an, a better idea of the penciler's vision of what the final piece should be. Because as a, an inker, that's what we're trying to do, is, is trying to visualize and imagine the final piece. When I approach this image, I look at the image and I go, okay, I want to go with a one two cocoa because then I want crisp, sharp angular lines. This is what I feel looks best over Dave's work. Um, it's, it's the style that I want to go with over, over his pencils. Um, here in the background, there's a lot of textures, a lot of concrete. There, there's, uh, you know, kind of um, spackling or, or stecco that's that's on the concrete wall behind him or, or on the building wall. There's bricks and there's a lot of texture. So there's opportunity to put in to play with different textures. And I said, oh great, I want to, you know, I want to use dry brush effect. I know I want to separate that background that's directly behind him, that building, um, because I want to push. The figure, which is Batman, who is the important image and the important part of the image and the important element uh, in this illustration. So I want to make him pop out. I want to push him forward. Batman is in a lot of shadow, a lot of solid black. So I knew that the background behind there wasn't going to be inked in complete solid black. There was going to be a lot of rough lines behind it. So I started imagining that and visualizing uh, ahead of time, even before I I inked. Um, started inking this image, I sort of created a game plan um, and I uh, had something to start with. And behind the building uh, that he is standing directly on is Gotham City. We, we've got a backdrop that uh, you can see Gotham City and, and uh, I know Dave likes to pencil his uh, buildings freehand most of the time, um, creating an, uh, an organic feel to his buildings and that adds a lot of character. And Gotham City itself is its own character. So even though that is uh, an important you know, setting and it's, it's a character itself, the, the buildings in the background, Gotham City. So I wanted to be able to push the buildings back even further. So I decided that I was going to ink that last um, so that I make sure that I, I separate um, that particular background from the midground, which is that building. And the figure in the foreground, which is Batman. Um, so by doing that, saving to the end, I could ink that with thinner lines. And then if I had to, I could go back and build up the lines on the midground or the foreground, um, thickening the lines by pushing that further up. Um, so you'll see later in the video that, that the buildings are, are inked uh, last. Um, I start my line work um, and you can see where I do a lot of holding lines, uh, the lines that are outlining where the solid blue is. And that's just so that uh, when I'm going back in with a brush and filling in the black, that the ink sort of has a fence to stay within, a border to stay within. And um, I like doing a lot of my line work, which is the, the bleeds, which is a lot of that rendering that you see um, that is on the figure. I like doing that because first, because that is uh, requires a um, clean lines most of the time. So I want to make sure to put the uh, line work down first so that there isn't so much ink on the Bristol board and the Bristol board doesn't begin to warp or become concave or wave and things which would then um, you know make my line wavy or, or be more difficult to ink. So. I save which spotting the black, which is filling in the black area, the larger black area um, for the very end. Um, and right here you see on this cape, the reason I'm going back and I'm thickening the bottom part of that line and keeping it at an angle is that I want to show that there's a kink on that cape that it curves. So it when it dips downward away from the light, those lines are thicker and as it approaches the top and it curves that reaches the light and so those lines be feather and they become thinner um, and so that's the uh, the effect that I, you can see that I'm, I'm building up here and that goes back to what I mentioned before is just keeping that light source in mind as you're inking the, the page uh, or as you're, you're inking your image always keep that in, in the back of your mind and, and be aware of that um, light source and, and shapes um, shapes are very very important
so that your illustration does not look flat. And with the 102, I can I can go in and fill in um, some of the um, uh, areas that uh, uh, aren't as wide or just don't need as much uh, ink filled in. So I can just fill that in with with my nib. Um, and uh, you want to make sure that you have a, a, a light hand when you're doing that. Um, you don't really want to dig into the uh, the artboard um, because you will scratch up some of the fibers from the paper. Um, you can see here where this is sculpting my line where I created uh, the, the outline of the shape and then I fill it in with the, the nib. Um, and and um, when doing that, I, I generally have a light hand uh, doing that when I'm sculpting out my lines. Um, I do change up the amount of pressure that I place on the nib throughout the illustration, and that's only at certain times to get a certain effect or weight variation. Um, most of the time, I want to control my line work by sculpting my, my lines and shapes um, that you see uh, along the, uh, the forearm there. And uh, I, I, I do that um, very slowly. Um, a lot of those, aren't, I'm not throwing them as fast or putting as much pressure down. Um, and when I throw my bleed, I, I do throw it from a, uh, a wider base. I build that up, and then I throw my line out quickly. And, and as my line is nearing the end of that line, I start to lighten the weight very quickly. Um, on, on the amount of pressure that I'm playing, placing on the nib. I'm placing less pressure as I'm throwing that line very quickly so that the line feathers out and becomes very fine and thin at the, at the end. And the faster and the lighter my hand is, the thinner that line will be at, at, the, at the end, at the point. Um, and if I want the line to be um, a little thicker at the point, then I keep a certain amount of pressure and I will throw the line just a little slower. And right on his hand there, I placed a, a little square line, which I, I sculpted. Um, and uh, keeping that kind of angular, kind of little angular, almost <laughs> almost rectangular um, line that, that, that was done on, on, his, on his hand. So this is a French curve. Uh, a French curve is, is uh, a stencil. It is... Um, has an inking edge. This particular inking edge on this French curve is double-sided, so I can use both sides of that French curve depending on the direction that I want my curve to go. The pen that you see me using here is the um, it's Speedball Dip Pen. And it is from the B series. It's a calligraphy uh, series, and that one is a B5. Um, and I used it to, to throw down uh, quickly uh, a thick uh, lines so that I didn't have to fill it in so much with the with the nib um, because you you really don't want to have to do that too often um, because you will get some fibers in, in the inkwell of your nib and it gets caught in there um, and throughout the video here um, off camera you don't really see where I'm actually dipping my my um, my pen tip right right there I'm actually dipping it back in because I need more ink on the nib. I dip it into a small little jar that I have filled with ink. And if this is your first time watching one of my videos and you're curious about the type of ink that I use, I use the Coronor Universal Ink. Um, I don't mix my ink. Uh, I know that there's there's different artists who mix their ink. I don't. I, I find the Coronor works very well for me, and it's it's a nice solid black. Um, uh, but you can make it darker black by, by mixing it. Some people use uh, Black Magic. Um, I know that there's some that mix it with Higgins and, and things like that, um, and that that's really um, a preference. That's really up to you. Um, you know, I, I would recommend if if you're unsure, well, give it a try. You know, try mixing the ink and uh, ink a few practice lines and, and see how that works for you and see what you prefer. Um, also, off camera, what I'm doing as well is when I lift the nib up, uh, is that I'm also cleaning it on. I have an old pair of jeans taped to my desk on my left side. And what I do is then I will clean the inside of the ink well and uh, I make sure that there isn't any dry ink on the inside because then that clogs and prevents the smooth uh, the ink to flow out smoothly. So I, I go through and I clean it. I also on the right side of my drafting table I have a spare scr uh, scratch piece of uh, Bristol board. Um, I buy my Bristol board in an art pad of um, 
14 by 17 and then I have it cut down to 11 by 17 because the 400 series doesn't come in 11 by 17 pad. So when I cut it down, I have an extra three inch strip of Bristol board and I can use that on the side of, I tape it down to the side of my drafting table so that I can scratch off any extra ink or any extra fibers from the Bristol board that get stuck in the nib. Sometimes uh, when I dip my nib in, um, I will dip it in a little further and get more ink than uh, I had intended. So I will wear it out a little bit on that scratch piece of paper. Um, and knowing how much ink you want on your nib, that just comes over time. And, and you will. You'll, you'll, and the more you ink, the more you do something, um, the more you will learn. You know, I, I wish that I had spent every day inking um, and had inked much more than, than what I have actually done because then I would know much more. I would, I would be much more advanced than, than I am right now. Here you can see on the right, that's the Bristol board and scrap piece of paper. But I was kind of pulling the camera back. And this is actually filmed with my iPhone, which is, uh, I think, great. It's amazing that, <laughs> you know, all this can be filmed uh, 1080p and with with the phone, uh, I think that's just uh, uh, it's just really impressive. I I, <laughs> I just think you know wow, it's great technology where where it's really has gone. Um, and also the uh, on the left is where I mentioned before the photocopy that I, I kept referring back to because you could see in the graph plot you can see all the different gray tones. Um, you can see the underdrawings and gestures that I really wish that hadn't been lost in the non-photo blue um, that would most likely have changed up a lot or. I mean, a few things that, that I would have done different um, had I been able to ink over and been able to see those, uh, those different uh, shades of, of the pencil. This here, this is a dry brush. Um, the, this is an older brush, a brush that I've had for about maybe 15 years, maybe, maybe less than that, definitely 10 years. Um, and it's a Winsor Newton Series 7. It's size 2 brush. Um, the, it's two round. And um, what I did was I let it just fray out the, the sables and the bristle just fray and they just, you know, they, it, it no longer um, <laughs> snaps back to a fine point. The bristles are just everywhere. Um, and so that gives me my dry brush effect and I, I like doing that, using that for the dry brush effect and not adding very much ink. Um, and uh, that gives me that, uh, that dry brush. And in spotting my black, I have now I now start to use the 8404 Raphael, and it's also a size two. Um, I like the Raphael the way it, it just feels much softer, and the way that it releases the amount of ink. So for me, I, I use it when I spot my black, and then I have a second one that I use when inking hair, because um, I, I just love the strokes and the way that that it that it works. But when doing a lot of my my um, bleeds and stuff, um, the Raphael. I, uh, the brushes that I have um, don't work for me because uh, I bought them online and when I got when they were shipped to me the the ends and the tips got damaged so they don't really have that really fine point so instead I use uh, my Windsor Newton which comes uh, in its own protective casing and it's uh, shipped differently so um, if you're buying uh, a brush um, over the internet well um, you know really either brush it, they both work um, just as well as the other, but the Windsor Newton cost a few dollars more, but it's worth it because the way that it's packaged and shipped. So if you're buying it online and this is your first brush, I would recommend just going with the Windsor Newton because of the way they're packaged. Um, and so I, I switch back and forth. You can see throughout this entire image, I've used um, a uh, Windsor Newton brush that uh, was really frayed, um, an old brush and I did my dry brush effect. I used my Raphael 8404 for spotting my black, and that's just really just preference, just because I like the way the ink flows. Um, I used a Windsor Newton Series 7 size 2 miniature brush um, for some of the bleeds, uh, some of the bleeds that were just a, a smaller um, little tick lines. I, I used that um, uh, on there um, for, for that, um, just to kind of mix them in there um, and trying to blend them in so that you really can't tell the bleeds that were done with the nib and, and done with um, the, the miniature brush. This is a scratch art tool. This is to uh, scratch uh, the, uh, the artwork and, and creating a, a rough texture into the, the, 
the uh, the stucco that's in the background or, or the plaster that's over this this brick wall um, and so I want to create little chips and uh, rough texture and I use that a lot when I'm using, when I'm making like gravel or or I'm making concrete like this um, I, I like to use that for that effect um, and I also use the uh, speedball the calligraphy B series which was the size was a B5 I believe um, that I used so there were several different tools that were used and of course the primary tool which is the hunt 102 uh, crow crow by speedball that was, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the tool that I started with in the beginning, and I actually have two. This is where I'm going to do some reverse inking and do some texture. So I'm using a second um, 102, which is I'm, us I'm using to dip into my white ink um, that uh, I use from Dr. Martin. It's called Pen White, um, and it's used in airbrush and tech pens, um, and it works very well with my nib. So I have a separate nib just for that. So I've used um, you know several different tools just to complete this this one image, um, and I you know I recommend uh, you know using whatever tool that that is going to give you the type of line work you're looking for, um, and whatever the illustration requires. You know if it's tech pen, um, I didn't use tech pens to to ink the buildings because I want an organic kind of look. A lot of the building were freehand. I, I did use a straight edge um, on certain lines that I that. Did require um, a straight line, which were mostly for the window, the inside of the windows, um, things like that. But um, you know, if, if using a tech pen, um, using a brush, or whatever it is that you're most comfortable with, that's going to give you the best line quality, and that is going to fit the illustration um, the best, then uh, it's going to give you that type of look that you and the pencil are, are looking for. Then use that tool. This is just. The way that that I ink, and this is the way that I've become comfortable, and what what uh, has worked for me so far. I, I'm still evolving. I'm still learning. Um, I do change up the way that I use the tool um, over time as I learn to manipulate that tool and learn how to use it, um, become more comfortable with it. Then, then I learn how to create different type of uh, line work. Um, but this isn't the only way to ink. I mean, there 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 is. Uh, you know, there, there's many different approaches to it. Every, everyone has a different style and uses different um, supplies and things like that. Um, so if you're unsure what to use, well, then you're welcome to try and, and use the, uh, the tools that you see here in the video and the supplies that, that I have. I do have a video that is titled uh, Art Supplies for Inkers, if you're curious and uh, want to know what's in my studio, everything from... Uh, uh, the, the type of ink that I have, type of nibs, and all the brushes that I have, everything is in that video. That video is about 45 minutes. Um, I, it, it, I consider it a one, an inking 101. I mean, it's just to suggest certain uh, supplies. Not, uh, you know, it's not in any way to say that those are the only supplies to use. But I do go into a bit more depth um, than uh, an actual introduction. I mean, I do go into depth a little more on on what uh, tool I use and how I use it and why I use it. So I want to break up um, some of those textures in the background as well, but I don't want to do too many. So I added little dots in there with the opaque white, which is, um, I'm sorry, the pin white from Dr. Martin, which is white ink, um, and uh, doing a little, you know, reverse inking, which is white over black. There were a lot of little highlights in his face that I really wanted to keep that were in the pencils, but I couldn't see them in the non-photo blue. So I did reference back and I did kind of create just a little bit of white in there um, just to, you know, just to show a little more detail in, in his face because uh, the faces are very important. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Here is the before and the, um, the after, meaning the older version on your left and the newer version on your right. Closer look. Uh, here at some of the line work and I really appreciate you sitting through the video taking your time um, Spending your time with me and uh, feel free to comment. Please do subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video